If you are a pesticide handler, as part of your job, there are a few more things that you need to know in addition to what we have just covered. Your boss cannot direct or allow workers to mix, load, or apply pesticides or assist in the application of pesticides unless the worker has been trained as a handler. Remember, under the WPS rule, you are considered a handler if you mix and load, apply, or assist with the application of pesticides. If you clean, handle, or adjust parts of application equipment, you are also considered a handler. Handlers must be at least 18 years of age. You should have already watched part one of this training for worker and handler safety for Hawaii. If you have not, please go back and watch that video before watching this one. As a handler, you'll often be working with concentrated pesticide products. This is why it's important to read and clearly understand the label instructions for proper handling and use of that product. The pesticide label is the best source for information on proper application steps for the best results. Applying too little or too much pesticide product to a crop may affect crop yields or even cause permanent damage to the crop, the environment, or workers. Your employer is required to provide information for you to better understand the pesticide products you are using, why and how they're being used, and how to access the label information you need in order to have safe and effective applications. Labels are also packed full of information that is essential to the handler. In addition to details such as the product name, EPA registration number, manufacturer and active ingredients, you'll find material related to environmental impact, storage and disposal, and potential health hazards along with first aid instructions in case of accidental exposure. Handlers are also protected with the availability of PPE or personal protective equipment. The label will specify required PPE necessary for the mixing, loading, and application of the product. These requirements may differ depending on the product and the activity to be performed, so it's important to have a clear understanding of the necessary PPE in order to be properly protected. As mentioned in the previous program, your employer is responsible for providing, storing, and maintaining label-appropriate PPE along with the necessary training and evaluations related to its proper use. Remember, signal words that are found on pesticide labels are a very quick and easy way to understand the hazards that a particular product presents. Caution indicates the least toxicity if inhaled or absorbed through the skin. It may also cause eye irritation. Warning suggests a moderately toxic reaction due to exposure, which could include severe eye irritation or damage, as well as harsh physical effects. Danger indicates an elevated risk of eye damage and potentially serious physical damage and illness. Danger poison is the most deadly, as indicated by the skull and crossbones image that accompanies the signal word. Any exposure to such a product should be considered the most serious, requiring immediate emergency medical care. When applying pesticides, applicators and handlers also must observe Application Exclusion Zones, or AEZs. The applicator must consider a circle or bubble around the application equipment as it travels through the treatment area and must ensure that people, such as other workers, facility neighbors, or passers-by, always remain outside of that bubble so they are not impacted or exposed to the pesticide. It is the applicator's responsibility to ensure that anyone who is not properly trained or protected does not come into any contact with the product being applied. The applicator must suspend a pesticide application if workers or other persons are in the application exclusion zone, either inside or outside the boundaries of the agricultural establishment, and must not resume the application as long as workers or other persons remain in the application exclusion zone. The AEZ can vary from 25 feet to 100 feet depending on the type of application equipment and the product being applied. This is to minimize drift contact to all persons and not just the handler. Other considerations for the handler may be to make adjustments to application equipment such as nozzle size or sprayer height. Sometimes it may make sense to notify workers or persons in the area and ask them to relocate or the handler may simply need to apply in a different area until the original intended area is clear of people again. If the pesticide being applied requires posting of the treated area, it is the responsibility of the employer to see that signs are posted at the common access areas to the field. 
Other ways you can avoid pesticide exposure include being aware of your location and the work situation taking place in nearby areas. Sometimes weather or unusual conditions cause pesticide materials to land in places they're not intended to. Wind can cause pesticides to drift, and rain can cause runoff, which can possibly expose you to pesticides. Always avoid application areas, as well as mist or dust clouds that may result from an application. Applicators and handlers should monitor wind or other weather conditions to minimize drift and runoff. Many pesticide labels have specific restrictions related to wind speed or rain. Again, reading and following label instructions is the law. Keep in mind that runoff of pesticides can contaminate bodies of water or areas that were not targeted by the pesticide application. Handlers should also be careful about applying pesticides near bodies of water, near sensitive ecosystems, or in areas where there is wildlife. The environmental hazards section on the label will provide specific information about the product's potential hazards to the environment. As a handler, even when you are not applying pesticides, it is important that you manage them properly to avoid accidents or potential exposure. Again, your employer will provide decontamination supplies such as clean water, soap, and single-use or paper towels. These items must be available in case of potential exposure and for routine decontamination. In the field, at least one pint of water in a portable container must be available for each handler. A clean change of clothes, such as coveralls, will also be provided as necessary. Because heat stress is another consideration in working in warm weather or with additional PPE, recognizing the signs and appropriate response of actions is also critical. If you're experiencing symptoms such as headache, nausea, dizziness, weakness, irritability, thirst, heavy sweating, or elevated body temperature, you may be experiencing heat stress. Remember, to deal with heat stress, find a cool place to rest outside the treated area. Remove excess PPE and clothing. Get yourself a cold drink and have someone sit with you until you start to feel better. You may need to occasionally transport pesticides, perhaps from storage to a mixing loading station or to another farm property, etc. When doing so, make sure to properly secure pesticide containers in an upright position so that they cannot tip over or be struck by other equipment. Perhaps they can be placed in a secondary storage container for safe transport. And never carry pesticides in the vehicle's passenger compartment or where food or livestock may be carried. It's also a good practice to keep copies of the labels and SDS for products being transported in case of an accidental spill incident. Once a pesticide application is completed, all equipment must be properly cleaned and stored while all pesticides must be kept in their original containers and placed in a locked storage area where only qualified and trained handlers or applicators can access them. Pesticides must never be stored in the same area as food, feed for livestock, or PPE. Remember, pesticide exposure can also reveal itself in a number of different ways. Sometimes you feel the effects immediately. These are called acute effects. Delayed effects are when you have been exposed, but don't feel any impact until a later time. This could be hours or days. Sensitization effects are when the pesticide needs to build up certain levels in your body before you feel those effects. And sometimes you may feel effects after having been exposed over a course of many months or years. These are chronic effects and can have long-lasting impact. What should you do if an accidental pesticide spill occurs? It can happen. Sometimes a container gets knocked over, or a few ounces get spilled during a mixing procedure. Whatever the reason, it can happen. The best response is to remember the three C's – control, contain, and cleanup. Before you touch anything, if you're not already wearing PPE, make sure you're protected properly. Gloves, eye protection, even a respirator mask if the product requires it. First, control the spill. Return any overturned containers to an upright position. Place a damaged container inside of another container. Take the appropriate measures to protect the environment, yourself, and others in the process of controlling the material from spilling further. Next, contain the spill. Use a spill kit, absorbent clay products, or even dirt itself to create a barrier around the spill to prevent it from spreading or flowing any further. Pay special attention to drain areas or natural bodies of water and do what you can to prevent harm to the environment. 
Finally, clean the spill thoroughly and completely. Follow all the label instructions for proper disposal, as well as any local or state laws about removal. Do everything possible to return the location of the spill back to its original condition. All of these safety precautions may seem like a lot more work, but if you educate yourself about the pesticides you use, know where to find the information you need to safely apply pesticides, and use your common sense, it will be easy to protect yourself, your co-workers, and your family. Before we finish, the Hawaii Department of Agriculture, or HDOA, has a handful of additional items for you to consider as a pesticide handler. Remember that the pesticide products you work with and apply on the farm are more heavily concentrated and potentially more hazardous than the products you might find at a local hardware or garden store. These products are not designed to be used at home, and it is unsafe and illegal to do so. It's important to always read the product labels to understand their safe and proper use. Gloves come in a variety of thicknesses and sizes for proper fit and for essential protection. Refer to pesticide product labels to know which gloves are appropriate for the products being handled and the task being performed. Don't forget, when removing PPE, it's important to properly wash your gloves first and continue to wear them while all other pieces of PPE are removed. Then wash the gloves again before removing them last. Store PPE in a clean, dry place away from extreme temperatures or chemical pesticides. Even low-level exposure to product elements can be hazardous and cause illness. As mentioned in the first part of the training for workers, pesticide containers are never to be used for any purpose other than for the product that was packaged in them. No amount of rinsing or cleaning can completely remove all residue from the container. Unless the label specifically allows for reuse, pesticide containers must always be disposed of according to label directions. Proper pesticide selection involves thoroughly reading and understanding the product label to make sure that all directions are followed. This includes making sure that the product being used specifically lists the crop and the pest being targeted. Pesticides are formulated to treat specific types of pests and crops. Ignoring or violating those guidelines is illegal and can be dangerous to crops, humans, and the environment. Applicators must also be familiar with the maximum application rates for pesticide products, and this can be found on the label. There is a maximum rate permitted for a singular application, as well as a maximum rate permitted over the course of a growing season or year. For example, a field of cacao can be sprayed with paraquat at a rate of 2.7 pints per acre, but there can be no more than five applications made throughout the year. There may also be restrictions for the amount of active ingredient permitted from all products containing that active ingredient throughout the year or growing season. This ensures that the pesticide residues on the crop are within the tolerance set by EPA, meaning that the crop is safe to eat by the time it reaches the dining table. Contact HDOA for specifics related to the maximum rates permitted if you are unsure. And finally, make sure to allow for an air gap or include a properly fitted backflow device when filling sprayers and other application devices in order to keep our water supplies safe. As a pesticide handler, you have a responsibility to your employer and your coworkers to perform applications and other activities in a proper and careful manner. Your employer will supply the tools and information you need to do these tasks and to do so successfully. Thanks for your attention to these additional steps and for your willingness to do what it takes to be a safe and effective handler at our facility.